Hey guys, Ryan here with Night and Day Marine with another Lawrence Training Academy video. I am here again with my Hook 7 reveal. And in this tutorial, I'm going to show you all of the ins and outs and features of the side scan imaging. So thank you guys so much for watching. Appreciate everybody who subscribes to my YouTube channel, Night and Day Marine. So let's go ahead and get started here. So as you can see, we have our normal side scan picture, as I'm sure you guys have seen before. So let's go ahead and cover some of the features that you have here directly on the screen. So unlike all the other, so your down scan or your regular sonar that scrolls from right to left, this scrolls from top to bottom. And instead of having the scale that goes from top to bottom here for your depth, you have it, as you can see, along the bottom. But there's not just one, there's actually two. Splits off from 20, 40, 60, 80 and 20, 40, 60, 80. So the thing about side scan is that you kind of have to picture it in a three dimensional image. So as you're seeing this, this little center line right here is you. This is your sonar signal sending out, that's your boat. Now this black area on each side of it, that's your water column. So that's the water in between your transducer and the bottom. However, this isn't just straight out or straight down what it's picking up you have to envision this as being kind of a pyramid shape. So there is actually an area of the bottom that you're not actually seeing here on the screen. But never fear, that area that you're not seeing is the area that shows up on your down scan. So that way it makes sure that you're not missing any areas on the bottom, but it still allows it to be able to pick up the nice clear resolution image. So what we're seeing right here along the bottom is about 20 feet out to the side of us but it's also about 20 feet deep at the same time so it's kind of hard to envision that but like i said it is more of a, a kind of a pyramid shape as you go out there so anytime you see some structure right along this edge you know that it is 20 feet out and 20 feet down but the thing is though is that say when you get to 40 feet it doesn't mean it's 40 feet down it's still only you know depth of 18 feet but it means that it is 40 feet out to the side so it can be a little bit confusing there like i said you kind of have to wrap your mind around it and really kind of uh, picture it in terms of a three-dimensional picture so now the next thing i'll point out is right here is we have our overlays these are just your general overlays that you get with any screen they are defaulted automatically to your speed over ground your depth and your water temperature. However, you can go through and you can adjust them, change them to anything you want. You can make them bigger, you can move them around on the screen, or you can set it to voltage or just a variety of other options. Now, if you wanna know more about that, check out my Hook Reveal Basics video as I do cover that in greater detail. Okay, so now let's go ahead and get started on the menu options. Now, let's go ahead and press our enter button right there, which will bring up where you can see where you have your mode auto and you'll see more options down here now what you're going to do is you're going to press enter on your mode and you're going to switch it to custom that allows us to go through and adjust all of our various menu options for the side imaging now the first option here is going to be our range now you can adjust the range manually actually by just pressing your plus and minus buttons see how i press my plus button it zooms it in i press my minus button it zooms it out allowing me to see it a little bit further out to the sides you can do it for those buttons or you can press your enter button and you can manually set it right here by setting your range or you can set an auto range. So if we go all the way up, set it to auto. That way, whenever the depth of the water changes, it will automatically change along with it. However, I kind of actually like using the plus and minus buttons for a manual range here because sometimes it doesn't allow you to see quite as far out to the sides with the manual range as the unit can actually, you know, is capable of doing. So whenever we exit here, and actually I want to point something out, as you zoom that out there, you can actually keep zooming it until you get all the way out to where it's kind of like a little dark edge. So as I kept zooming, as you can see, I'm actually out to 140 feet and I'm still picking up structure all the way out to the sides. Now if I keep zooming out, eventually I'm going to get to a point where I can't see any further. So if I go all the way out to 180 here, so so you can see I'm still picking up structure, but it's getting really dark out there. So it is going to be a little bit, you know, less defined, not quite as crisp of an image. And so, you know, you may not want to go all the way out that, but it's up to you. 
So, but I usually recommend zooming it all the way out until where you can get to the point that it starts to almost completely lose the image entirely. But you may also want to be able to see the you know image there in the center, so it may be more important to you to have it zoomed in a little bit closer, not see as far out to the side, but be able to see you know the fish in the water column. So it's more of a personal preference, but that is how you do it. So let's bring that back up here. So now we have our frequency. Now the frequency is very important with your sight imaging. You have two options. You have your 455 and you have your 800. Now what the 800 is, it's a, a higher resolution image. It's gonna give you a more crisp picture with your sight imaging. And so any structure that it picks up down on the bottom is gonna be a lot more defined. However, the thing about 800 is that it cannot see as far out to the sides as the 455. And so if you're driving around and you see some pillars or some trees that are sticking up out of the water, and so you know they're there, but they're not showing up on your screen when you pass it, try switching it to the 455. Generally, that will allow your unit to kind of expand its range and be able to pick up those pillars and be able to display them on your screen better. So. Uh, like I said, so it's really just kind of a personal preference. Some people like the 8, some people like the 455, and it also applies to the conditions of the water. If you're in really shallow water, a lot of times the 800 might come in a little bit better. If you're in a lot deeper water or real murky water, the 455 will generally be the option you'll want to select. So let's go ahead and go back here. And actually, let's switch it back to the 455. Make it a little bit brighter on the screen, a little bit easier for you guys to see there at home. Now our next option is our contrast. Now the unit is going to default to auto, which is generally where you're gonna to wanna to leave it. But as you can see here, we have our little slider bar where we can go up and down with it. So I can kind of lower my contrast, which is gonna make everything darker, or I can go up with it, which is gonna make everything brighter. But it kind of washes things out if you go too high. So I usually like leaving mine on auto there. But if you want to set it to a manual contrast level, because, well, the one thing I want to point out is that if you go up and you make this adjustment, and then as you're moving around during the day, if the unit feels like that's not the, you know, the best visible image can give you, it will automatically adjust it back. So you may lose that setting there. So if that you don't want that to happen, you can press enter, air down to auto contrast, shut that off, which will then turn it orange, which means you're on a manual mode, and then you can manually go back up, press enter, and now you can adjust that however you want it and it'll stick. It won't automatically adjust itself back as the unit sees fit. But I like mine being on auto personally, so I'm gonna leave mine on auto for the time being. So let's go ahead and go back. Now the next option is advanced. So the only option we have here is our surface clarity, which is going to be defaulted to low, but you can go through as with all the other screens, you can set it to medium, high, or off. Now on here this is only going to affect the kind of water column area here in the center so if you're getting just a lot of clutter like right there in the center part of the screen which i've seen a lot you can go through and you can increase this value right here your surface clarity and it'll help filter out all that extra clutter you're getting right there in the center giving you a nice clear crisper image but you don't want to go too high because that can filter out other objects like fish so be kind of wary of that so let's go ahead and go back now we have our restore mode defaults. Now all that's gonna do is it's gonna restore all of our side imaging settings back to their original default values. It will not affect any other screen. It will not default the settings for your down scan or your sonar. Uh, you know, if you want to default everything back, you can do like a soft reset on your unit. But if you want to just default this one screen, that is how you do it. So finally, let's go down to our more options. Click on that. Now the first one here is going to be our flip left right. Now if we select that, all that does is it flips the image. So the image that's on the right will put on the left, the image on the left will put on the right. Now that is particularly useful when, when you mount your transducer, if for some reason you have to mount your transducer backwards for any reason, you can go in here and you can flip it so that way the image appears on the screen correctly. Now with the triple shot transducer, I can't really see too many situations where you would mount it backwards, uh, unlike say like the, uh, the active imaging transducer, which you generally have to put backwards when you put it on your trolling motor. So um, like I said, you probably won't you need to use this, but that is how you do it. So the next option down is our range lines. 
So what that's gonna do is it's just gonna give us these white lines, kind of helps us identify the distance objects are out in the water from you. Let me turn that off. The next one is gonna be our palette, which is just the color of the screen. Some people might like different colors on there. It may be easier for them to see. Uh, it's kind of just a user preference. I personally like number one, which is that nice teal color. It reminds me of the color of the water. Uh, it's just, that's my preference, but you guys can select anything you want. And now the last one here is gonna be our view. Now it's gonna to default to left and right, which it's applying to our left scan and our right scan. But if we select it, you can go and you can select it to where you can see only the left side, or you can see just the right hand side, or we can do left and right. So you're probably just gonna wanna leave it there, uh, you know, in most cases, but it does give you the option to be able to view just one side. Now on the older units, you had to go in here and select that to be able to switch between side scan and down scan. But now with the newer software on these newer units, they made it to where you just switch it on your pages screen. So, all right, so that's really about it. Uh, one thing I didn't point out is that to get to this screen here, we just press our pages button, we arrow over to side scan, and we press enter. And voila, brings up our side scan picture. So, all right, so that's it for today for our structure scan video. I wanna thank all of you guys for watching, and I really appreciate you all for subscribing to my YouTube channel, Night and Day Marine. So, like I said, that's really it for today. So, as always, stay safe out there, guys. All right, well, that's it for today, guys. Thank you all so much for watching. And if you enjoyed this video, please like it below and hit the subscribe button and the little bell. This will allow you to get notifications every time I release a new training video for your favorite Lowrance product. And don't forget, when you watch videos from Lowrance Training Academy, the difference is night and day. All right, I'll see you all next time.